So this week we're going to be working with a girl in a boat or girls in a boat. I was very lucky to have um, Marlisa and Rosalind uh, be prepared to model for some photographs which I took um, at the studio in the boat that I have. So you'll have a much better printer than me, but I've printed off some of these photographs. I'm going to start by doing some sketching in charcoal from some of these poses. And then I'm going to show you how you might put one of these figures in a boat uh, against some kind of background, uh, doing all that um, drawing in uh, charcoal and pastel. And then for the sort of second half of the uh, tutorial, I'll start a painting from one of these studies. So if you have any tracing paper, this might be a good opportunity to see what we can do with tracing paper. For example, um, before I start the, the drawing, um, so I did this, this drawing of Rosalind, and I was quite inspired by some of those images of Grace Darling. So I thought, how about, by doing it on tracing paper, I can then play around a little bit with um, how I actually compose this piece of painting, this piece of drawing. So I thought I'd put her onto some rough waters with a lighthouse to go to. And then the business of where do you actually place your figure, your figure in, in a boat? Is it better like that? Uh, is it better like this? She's high up above the horizon, or should she be down here? So you can just play around. That's the great thing with this tracing paper um, approach, that you can um, play around with the relative position of the subject and its setting. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, if you're going to draw in tracing paper and you've got a very busy table like me, you might want to put something underneath it. Uh, tracing paper was Degas' favoured medium, favoured surface for drawing in charcoal. And you'll find, uh, if you do this, so I'm going to work a little bit with this particular view of Marlisa. And, and because at the moment I'm just uh, starting a, a sketch of the figure and the boat, um, it doesn't matter about where I put it on the page particularly, I want to fit it on. But I'm not thinking so much about composition at the moment. So I'm drawing charcoal lines, fairly thin stick of willow charcoal. Uh, it flows very nicely on tracing paper. I mean, the qualities of tracing paper are, apart from the fact that it's translucent, um, it's a very smooth surface. So you can uh, produce very flowing lines. So that would be one way for me to start my drawing. And I like this view here because we're getting the end of the boat. Uh, some of you know this boat which I borrowed from the Canal Society at Polworth a few years ago and then they didn't really want it back because it's got holes in it. So there's not much use to them. But um, the apart from having holes in it, the other downside of this boat is that actually it doesn't have a pointy end. So if you look at if you're working with some of the views where you get the other end, then um, you might want to make it pointier than it is. But it's great to work with boats. It's a terrific shape, apart from all its associations. Um, just the shape. But it's a bit of a challenge because you're, you're, if you're dealing with perspective, these lines along the edge are curving lines. But I think to get in, as I'm doing here, the, this end uh, is quite helpful. And I tried to light the uh, photo shoot so that you'd get some good strong shadows. Uh, anyway, I'm digressing a bit. I want to work with some lines. So I wanted to talk to you about charcoal. And not about charcoal, about um, tracing paper. 
So it's nice and smooth. It works very well to do flowing lines. Uh, that'll help you find your subject a little bit. But you can also fill in tone. Look at your photograph with your eyes half closed. See some of these areas. And then try, try smudging because actually, because it's such a smooth surface, you can literally take everything off again. Which is, which is really nice for um, simplifying and also just getting back to, you know, back to the beginning. So I can actually turn that into a much more, should we say, mysterious drawing because I've smudged away any definition. Now what you will find as well, and I think hopefully you can see what's happening there on, on, the, uh, on the camera, that there's only so much, because it's so smooth, it'll only take so much charcoal um, so that's great for wiping off I can rub everything off and make this virtually clean if I want to but on the other hand I'll get to a point where when I'm trying to make things darker um, I won't be able to I won't be able to get any more there's not enough of a tooth to the surface of tracing paper for me to be able to um, get any more on but there's a solution to that uh, and that is that you spray it with fixative hairspray and then you do the, the the surface of the paper does develop quite a significant tooth so you can actually clean um, you can actually get a lot more um, charcoal on you can make things much blacker much stronger if that's what you're after so um, having worked with charcoal on tracing paper I then have as I've been demonstrating the possibility of putting this onto different backgrounds so here what do I want to do um, I have to do this a little bit from memory but uh, last Monday I was down at New Haven Harbour and there's a lovely view that you get of the opening of the harbour wall, or the, the opening of the harbour itself. There's a nice lighthouse. It's a wee bit like a, it's a bit of a sort of Miller Holmes lighthouse, but it's a lighthouse nonetheless, with its reflections and things. And then across, across the water, we've got Fife. That's what I remember. So you, you might have some images or some memories uh, of particular settings where you might like to put your girl in a boat or girls in a boat so something like that do I want to if I'm particularly keen on the opening of the harbour mouth then maybe I don't want I want to arrange my Lisa in such a way that I exploit that is that where she's heading um there is, of course, the, the question of proportion. You know, how big should she be against that? Um, and I think probably, to my eye, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't want to be right up, up here where she's about to leave the harbour mouth because she's too big for that. So down somewhere down here, I can place her so that I show that's where she's heading, the opening of the harbour mouth but she's still far enough away for that to be believable. So that would be a good thing you could do with tracing paper. Another clever thing that Degas did with tracing paper was that if something didn't work one way, he tried it the other. So you can also turn tracing paper over. You can see that's a bit fainter, but uh, it might have turned out that I would have liked her to have gone the other way, but I think actually she's fine that way around. So, other things that I tried then, this one of Rosalind, where I was interested in getting her to look a bit like Grace Darling. I had, I'd ended up, I don't know if I've misdrawn this or if this is how it was in the photograph, but she's pointing up the way a little bit. So that goes well with her trying to ride, ride these waves. But I could also have just placed her somewhere like New Haven, where she wasn't at such an angle. 
So you can also play around a bit with that angle using the trace, tracing paper option. And then the third one, because I was looking through photographs of the sea of water, and actually we had some amazing sunsets on the, um, in the Hebrides. And so there's this particular, I'm just, sorry, just trying to get a photograph up on my computer. Um, as well as tracing paper, I found some blue paper and some green paper, which I'm working with. So I thought it might be quite nice to do something based on one of these really lovely sunsets. So I've got some blue paper and we had these sort of unbelievable, you know, sort of over the top colorful sunsets. It works quite well on the blue paper because a lot of my, what I see in my photograph of that sunset, a lot of it is actually quite blue. So this time I'm, I'm putting the, the, the girls this time down against something colorful. So this is all a bit provisional. I'm just really trying to show you ways of experimenting with placing your figures and your boat against some sort of setting. And this time it's color. So it doesn't show through that well, but it's giving me a little bit of a bit of an idea. Um, so where do I want them? I mean, there is this lovely light coming through the reflections of the bright sunset in the water. So I think I probably would actually put them over here a bit so that um, my composition would make something of the figures in the boat, but also something of the, um, the colours of the sunset. So I'm just trying to cover up another piece of paper. So that, yeah, I like, I, I like the look of that. So what happens next? That's, that's what I've decided on. I could develop this further as a colour piece of work. For example, just by sticking this down, I could stick it all together and then use the transparency, the translucency of the tracing paper to actually bring things through. So, you know, I could work a bit like this where I bring that through to my sort of top surface. I've then also got to think a bit about the colour in this um, sunset situation. But there was another thing I just wanted to show you, which was again a little bit of a happy accident. Now, which one was it? I put together all the bits of paper it was this one I had these so I'll take that off there a second I had these lined up oh it's annoying this is a happy accident that I now can't remember what it looks like I don't think that's the one one of these I had my drawing of the girls on top of a photograph oh it's that one I think there we go I don't know if this makes sense, if you can see that, but what I saw when I came into the room was what's showing through, which is a photograph of the two of them, looked a little bit like a really strong shadow or reflection. And that made me think, well, that would be something that I would really like to work on in my composition, to have quite a big dark shape down here, which I think adds to the to the drama. Anyway, that was just an example of how whatever you put your tracing paper drawing onto may well generate some interesting possibilities. So that's what I was, the point I'd got to there. So in my painting, I'm going to make sure that the girls are over to the right. 
so that I can make something more of the colours of the sunset. And I'm also going to do something with the um, big dark shape shadow silhouette. And some of the images that I've sent you in the email uh, include, I think it's particularly Monet, who made a lot of the reflections of the women in the boat. Uh, he was really into, you know, the way in which water offers almost a kind of impressionistic view of reality, the way in which the water surface breaks breaks up things in a reflection. It's very like impressionism. So there we go. That's that's the stage I've got to. Um, how you translate that into a painting then, you could draw through a bit, you could even start to put, if you're going to work with colour, you might stick all of that together and then bring some of the colours through to the top surface. To a certain extent this depends on how much you want to, to rehearse, uh, how far you want to go with a study before you actually start a painting and I, you know I think that can vary from person to person some people it's helpful to plan things I think we talked about this a little bit with the last week's project some people planned very carefully and executed their plans other people worked in such a way that there were lots of surprises along the way but provided they were sensitive to those surprises and um, went with them, used them as part of uh, the, the process of developing their work, then that was all, all good. So I would do a little bit more where I try and bring through some of the colour from my background and also maybe I would do a little bit of colour on these figures just so that I've got a bit of an idea of how I'm going to develop colour once I get into a painting. And then from that, so I'm, I'm going for sort of medium rehearsal. I just want a little bit of an idea about colour, but I'm not going to work things up too much so that when I actually start the painting process, there's still some nice surprises to come uh, at that stage. So I'll pause there and set up to um, make a painting or start a painting based on this particular choice. So I've gone for colourful sunset. I think my figures will probably be quite sort of silhouetted with just a little bit of light um, hitting them. But you may well go for something different, uh, rough waters, calm waters. I've worked with the whole boat and um, whole figures you might want to home in on. Uh, more of a detail, you know, more of a, um, a close-up. So there's different possibilities and there'll be questions, of course, about, you know, what happens with the reflections and uh, that's another thing that you can explore. So I have my composition, my idea, uh, set up at the easel and... I'm going to work on, actually work on an old canvas to try and set things up so you can see both. So I've got an old canvas. I really liked the blue paper. Uh, I had some blue sugar paper that I used for my background. So because this is an old canvas, uh, I'm going to just start by covering it with a blue that was pretty similar to the sugar paper. So I'm going to be working into, to get this started, I'm going to be working in, into a wet surface, but I've, I've rubbed that in, as you can hear, fairly um, strongly, so there's not thick paint, that's, that's been worked into the canvas just with a brush and a bit of spirit. So I'm going to develop, or make a start on this painting, and I'll sort of stop start the filming so you don't have to watch every step but I'll show you a few of the steps at least to get it started. So this is this is my idea um, you know based on my composition which was the sunset 
Um, which is why starting with this middle to dark tone ground is possibly quite a good idea, but it might, you know, that you might be doing something else depending on what your, your idea is. But probably you would start a little bit like I'm starting, and whether or not you do the blue background. Um, but it would be worth starting with something uh, tonal. So drawing, got to get things in the right place, haven't I? Uh, drawing with probably some brown paint would work quite well. Well, let's see. I mean, if I put that there, so it's always good for you to see. I think I need to have it that high. I was just wondering how high I want this to be. I mean, my... My sketch is actually a bit of a, almost a bit of a square, but I'm, I've not got a square canvas. So I think that's where I'm going to put the horizon. I don't get quite so much sky, but I'll get plenty of water and reflections. And I wanted that big shadowy reflection. So I think my figures and my boat might be quite small. So I'm starting in monochrome. Probably good if you just see my uncertainty. So I think that's where they're going to be. I think that would be all right. Um, so the work initially is to, to sketch it out a bit. Because I'm in, in wet paint, you know, if I want to change this, really I'd have to take a rag to it and rub a lot of it out I'd probably lose some of the blue and I might need to sort of freshen up the blue but it looks like I might manage this just in a wanna but I wanted to just show you that I'm not only doing a few lines but I'm trying to introduce a certain amount of tone filling in and I think with my Setting. We had a one or two rocks here, which looks quite nice to fill that space. So I'm going to pause while I draw a little bit more uh, with the brown paint, and then I'll start blocking in a little bit of colour to show you the next stage. So I've done a little bit more drawing, and one of the things that I had to alter slightly was the size of the boat. I remember this now, working with figures and boats. It's a bit like working with a figure and a a sofa or an armchair or a bed, you've got to get the proportion within your figures, also the, pro the proportion between the figure and the piece of furniture, if you like. In this case, it's a boat. So I had to make the boat a little bit bigger. Um, the other thing maybe worth showing you is that without being too precise and final about the drawing, there were a few things I wanted to change. So I've still got some of my blue ground color. So I can actually change uh, some of the drawing by looking at the negative shape. So that's quite useful here between this figure and well, to bring out her arm or to alter the size of the oar. You know, I can do a little bit of changing like that but you know basically this is a a wet in wet situation and I think it's just good to, to deal with that uh, which sometimes means you've got to well you've got to deal with paint mixing and sometimes you've got to flirt yes I have to change Marlies's hair so sometimes you've got to um, float paint um, in order to stop it mixing too much. So now I'm going to prepare some colours and I'll probably apply them with the bits of card again. But it is worth being happy, you know, working on this stage to a point that you're happy enough with. Um, and it was great that the girls had sort of light and dark clothing so I can get a reasonable effect um, by drawing lines but also blocking in some of the light and dark shapes 
I feel like perhaps because it's water, I might, it might be worth putting in a few horizontal marks just to indicate there's a texture there, a texture of the surface of the water, of the ripples. So I'll pause while I mix up some colour and I'll, I'm now going to put on some light colour because if you, if you look at my drawing, all of this bright, bright light and bright colour would be good to know about um, as I, for the point when I then go on to work with the figures. So I've mixed up some colours and they've been partly, I've been guided by the pastels, which I think is a really useful thing. Uh, so some of those brighter colours, um, and I'm applying them with a card initially just to get things um, locked in and to introduce some um, some light to the scene because as, as I start to work on the you know once I start to work on the figures I think if I've got a, a feeling of light in the painting that will help so because the the ground is wet that blue background there's a certain amount of mixing already, which I think is useful. That's a bit of white, because I was using white chalk in the pastels. And on the palette, I mixed a little bit of the, the blue background color into the white. So that it's not a pure white, it's a white that's um, related to the blue. So just getting some of these down a little bit provisionally. So there's some light in the sky, and then I'll put some light, some of these other colours that are on the water. And then I'll need to take stock and see how I'm going to tackle the figures. So I think for my, my choice of subject, it's really helpful to have that blue ground. I think it's holding things together pretty well. And I, you know, I could even leave a lot of the painting um, blue, blue gray, well, we'll see. Anyway, it's holding things together, so I don't have to do anything about it at the moment. It, what I did in my drawing was I took a, a turquoisey blue pastel to put some light on the, the water that isn't the, the bright colour of the sunset. So that would probably be a useful thing to do as well. Why don't I do that as well? I'll mix that up so that that's ready so that I can work around the figures, around the negative shape of the figures. So I'm just going to put on some of this... Um, pale turquoisey blue actually with a brush because it's probably good to demonstrate the different possibilities with this working into the wet working into the wet ground so as I do that I was saying you know some of these gaps between the figures the negative shape and of course you see you get a different different effect with the brush I mean what's on the end of my brush now is not clean paint uh, it's mixed a bit with the blue. So the important thing is for me to know what's on the end of the brush. Is it clean paint? Do I want clean paint? Uh, maybe for areas down here where it doesn't need to be quite so bright. I can keep on working with what's effectively muddier, more subdued paint. But I need to wipe my brush and pick up new paint if I want it to be really clear uh, or clean sharpen its effect. Anyway, that was just to sort of liven up some of that blue and to show that I, if there's a way, um, if I need a way of working between the figures, around the figures, I can do that um, as well. So that's, that's brought the water up. And next I want to start working on the figures then. And I'm going to darken them a little bit in places. I might even add some blue to my brown so that it becomes slightly blacker. 
Uh, I'll put on some dark shapes and then I'll try one or two light bits of light catching um, these, these figures. So before I put colour onto the figures in the boat, I would find it helpful just to darken some of the shapes. And the, these are the darks that I see in my charcoal drawing. I added a bit of ultramarine to my brown umber, and that's given me a black. And so I'm just darkening some of the shapes, for example, in their hair, maybe a bit in their clothing. Just to get a little bit more contrast to help them stand out. Uh, so that I've, yeah, I've got my kind of monochrome guide before the colour goes on. But actually, I don't know that I want to do much more to that. Maybe a bit in the oars. Partly so that I don't, I don't lose them. And then I've mixed a few colours. And they are, let's see, a little bit of light now. Um, thinking about, how about a little bit of light on their hair? All that E. And maybe some colour in the boat. I don't know if I've mixed up enough paint. Bit of colour in the boat, and I'll put a little bit of light, a bit of light on the edge of the boat. So um, light sources are always something we think about. And what I'm doing, I don't know what you'll think of this, but in the studio, these girls were sort of lit from above, and that's that's the light that's in the photograph, obviously, and that's what I'm going to work with in this scene, even though this sunset is a little bit behind them. But I think that's okay, I think that can work. Because there's a lot of light around with this sunset. So that's what I suggest you do. I suggest you look at the light. Uh, yeah, well, I think that probably we're going to discuss this depending on what your, your particular uh, compositions are going to be but it certainly can work um, to actually have different light sources at play uh, but we'll just have to see I started that explanation and of course it was not entirely thought through so one more thing I'm going to do I'm going to pause just while I make a little bit of color for their faces and hands because I think that warmth would stand out quite nicely um, as a last bit of demonstrating. So just the last couple of points, I've made up some a kind of sanguine brown, uh, which I think is quite a good start to putting some warmth into these heads and hands. So a couple of things that we need to discuss, I think, are lighting, light source, and how that works for your particular composition. And I'll doubtless be encouraging you not to worry too much about it. Um, and the other is this, you know, what I've done here really, I've introduced colour. I think the main thing I was a bit disappointed actually with um, the colour of the, when I darkened some of my um, the darks in the um, in the hair uh, and the clothes because it was a little bit too I think it was just too black actually I would have preferred it if it was a warmer brown so it's thrown things a little bit and so certainly what I would do next in my painting is to warm up some of those darks so that um, well, I'd keep a, a colour balance, a balance of the temperature 
just going to quickly do that now and then I'm going to stop uh, and I hope that I've given you enough um, ideas to help you go from the combination of making a sketch from your your references so you might be using my photographic references here for the girls in the boat or the girl in the boat but you've hopefully got your own ideas for what else you're going to use um, for the setting and then it'll be a process really of making a sketch starting a painting and we can discuss the evolution the development of your painting over the next few days if possible when we meet on monday it'd be great to see uh, a sketch some sort of charcoal or possibly even pastel sketch of what your plan is to be uh, and i can as i say in, in, in an individual way discuss your particular composition and just the last thing i think it'd be quite good if i sort of soften some of those bits of turquoise but i'd highly recommend you do some of the things that i've been doing having some sort of wet ground that you work into a little bit it's really good to get get into slightly sticky territory with oil paint and to have to deal with uh, paint mixing and and use that to your advantage as you respond to to the the, the colors that are created by that wet in wet technique okay so see you tomorrow